What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel in another episode of the Seahawks franchise. Episode 3 begins with a big rivalry game against the San Francisco 49ers. We'll get this scenario started by talking about a star player on the other team. And that player is actually Nick Bosa. I thought it was George Kittle. We will be watching this game. So you're facing a better rival in the 49ers this week. And limiting the impact of Nick Bosa must be a top priority. How will you stop him? Praise Nick Bosa, challenge Nick Bosa, or talk trash. Well, I'm definitely not going to praise Nick Bosa. We're not going to challenge him. We're going to talk trash. Our top priority is smashing the 49ers. As far as we're concerned, he's just another guy with a confused look. Trying to figure out how they got beat so badly. Oh, we might have chosen the wrong answer. We got to beat the 49ers and score four touchdowns this week. I mean, if Chicago put up 45 points against an 85 overall defense, I think we've got a pretty good chance. But we are watching this game, and that's one thing I want to check on our schedule really quick. Because we started the year, obviously, with a loss to Russell Wilson and the Broncos. And now we're potentially, just based on overall, probably taking a loss to the 49ers. So that's an 0-2 start to the year. So where does this episode end? Because I would like to get through Season 1 not necessarily as quickly as possible. I want to see how well we play, but I don't want to do like five, six episodes just for season one. You know, so if we're getting through maybe like week four, week five, and we're, you know, like one and four, that'll probably shift how I do the episodes for the rest of this year. But if we're hovering around 500, heading into week four, maybe week five, where we'll likely in this episode, we'll probably have a few more episodes this year but i'm not sure yet we went over a bit of the draft board in the last episode and right now the favorites board is up to 22 players linebacker quarterback a few receivers here i want to talk about some of the players that i didn't talk about in the last episode manu cortez not really a guy that i would consider a first round target but if receiver something i want to take you know he's off to a decent start b release is okay um Good to great speed, great to elite acceleration and agility. Could have some great down the field ability, but D medium route running is a little concerning. Rashard Taylor, on the other hand, is a round one, the two projection. So he could be a second rounder. We'll see where he moves over the course of this year through the mock drafts. Taylor with a deep route running and B catching with great to elite speed, acceleration and agility. Taylor looks like he could be a very, very, speedy down the field threat which you guys know I love our offensive line needs a lot of work our defensive line needs even more work this year so defensive tackle is one of those things we're definitely going to keep an eye on and I'll decide what we're doing in the southeast region where a lot of these guys are focused corner is another thing that's going to be a pretty big deal for us and Dwight Beckford is the first corner on the board this year b-man coverage already is solid Beckford has the size at 6'3", 194. He's got the cover skills with B-Man. He's got the speed. The only question is the acceleration at decent to solid. You know, how good or how bad is that? The other skill he has unlocked is B-Tackling. So we could be looking at a solid number one, maybe a slot corner if the overall isn't that high, but corner is definitely something to uh, keep an eye on. Delby is another round one to two talent with B catching a C man coverage. We got a few safeties, Adrian Hill with C, and then a few of the QBs. Eric Wilkinson's had a draft story already this year, and I don't necessarily know based on the traits that these guys are all that solid, but QB is something we're absolutely looking at. Not the fastest guy with poor to marginal speed, but he has great to elite throw power, so he pocket passer for Wilkinson. James Marks is the second projected player off the board this year out of Auburn. And we don't know any accuracies for him. He is another guy that looks like a pocket passer with a pretty strong arm. And then there's Zach Pryor of Texas A&M, who is the most athletic QB in this class, at least from what I can tell right now, or at least one that's worth taking. B, deep accuracy. Looks nice. Great to elite speed. Solid to good throw power. And the other rating for Zach Pryor is B spin move. DK actually earned this upgrade last episode, and for a guy that has the speed, the jumping, the hands, obviously the only thing you really got to work on right now is the route running, and I actually don't know which one to go with here. 
to slot does short route running deep threat obviously does deep physical does like catching traffic and release and playmaker does break tackle and ball carrier vision and stuff like that so i guess do we go slot i guess i don't know upgrade for metcalf three short one medium perfect another speed upgrade for the seahawks this time for kenneth walker who also gets a little spin juke and awareness with that elusive upgrade didn't have the best week one our run game as a whole just didn't look great but kenneth walker 94 speed now yeah he's starting and a nice speed rusher increase for josh allen as well two awareness one finesse strength and tackling allen had a sack that was his only really impact play of last week. Let's hope he can have a good game against San Francisco. Did Barton return a week early? I could have sworn he was out for another week or two, but that's a good sign because Joel was a bit frustrating in coverage. And I also did, as you guys are probably going to wonder, change our playbook to an actual 3-4 playbook. I don't know why Seattle has 3-4 personnel, but their playbook's a 3-4. That seems like a bit of a... Uh, oversight on the ace part, but I did change our playbook to Pittsburgh's playbook as this is one of these simpler 3-4 playbooks as I think, you know, a, a team like, you know, the Tennessee Titans, right? Like you have 3-4, you have 4-4, but then you have dime, dollar, nickel, quarter. Like if, if you have all these other formations and subsets, then I have to go in and start deleting stuff. I think that a playbook like Pittsburgh's is just really simple you have three four you have dime you have nickel you have prevent simple and it's our first division game of the season trey lance versus drew lock can't say that i'm excited for this one we'll see how this one goes so can we find that first win this year as a lot of division football is happening this week chiefs beat the chargers and here come the Seattle Seahawks says we're going to have the ball at the 14-yard line because no one knows how to block, apparently. Drew Locke, however, has some pretty good protection back in week one. Three touchdowns, 300 yards. But going up against, I would say, a much better defense that we called out, which was probably not the right idea. So how is this offense going to start out this week? As we'll start with a give, and this is a nice start as we'll get more than two or three yards per run, at least to start this game. We'll see where the average is, but a nice start for our run game. Another give to Rashad Penny, breaks a tackle, and that's a loose football, and San Francisco's got it. And they're going the wrong way, but they've got the ball at the 30. If that fumble stands, and I'm not sure it will. And of course, the replay never shows the actual fumble. It always shows. And that's probably coming back. That fumble is overturned. It's third and two. And I'm not sure how San Fran already has momentum. That was an overturned penalty or fumble. Nice catch by Tyler Lockett. That was really tight coverage. Dolphins off to a 2-0 start. They beat the Ravens. First down for Drew Locke. Protection really good. As he'll throw again. Tyler Lockett, second catch, getting seven more. Had a pretty nice game last week. We'll see if we can find that deep pass game. That was the game plan focus for this week. I like the shots we did get. And we'll run the ball here. Kenneth Walker, first run, four yards. Drew Locke back to the air. And he'll throw this one to the sideline. Or it's caught by Goodwin. Seattle facing another third down. And it's a two tight end set as Locke throws again. Pressure gets there, but a tight end's open. And Locke starts today four for four. And he finds Will Disley. I did change the split at running back. So we should be seeing more Kenneth Walker as that ball is thrown out of bounds. He had a receiver open. Noah Fant was right there. Third down. Eight yards to go. Safety on the blitz. is picked up. Locked down the field. Finds Noah Fant inside the 15. 
That's what I'm talking about. This has been a really nice start. Drew Locke to the air underneath. Lock it again. Can we punch this in? As the 49ers change their formation. And that's a throw to the end zone. Touchdown, Will Disley. Well, there's one score. And that one came pretty easy. Almost no resistance from San Fran's defense. How about that for a Seahawks start to this game? But here comes Trey Lance and the 49ers as our defense has a big task out of them this week. Debo Samuel gets the run on the first play of the game. So him, George Kittle, two guys to watch out for. Trey Lance throwing, and George Kittle gets open. He might be gone. Allen, why is he in coverage? Tie game, just like that. Just like that. Why is Josh Allen in coverage there? I gotta see what play that was. But my goodness. Too easy. We might be in for another fun game this week. Drew Locke back on the field as he's pressured. And that is hauled in. What a catch for Tyler Lockett. As the veteran just makes play after play. And that time the DB actually jumped for the football, but it's just better positioning by Lockett. I will say I like how aggressive Drew Lockett is under pressure. As we'll toss this play in, that spin move made no sense. Drew Locke on second down as that one's knocked away from Metcalf. And all of a sudden, Seattle facing third and 13 as we go empty. 49ers rush four and Locke throws that one out of bounds. Can we not give up a one throw touchdown this time around? I would like to stay in this game. Trey Lance on first down. Here comes Allen and Lance gets out the pocket. And he'll slide after a gain of four. I do like that Josh Allen's making plays off the edge. Although, in Wilsu, okay, I, maybe I need to adjust my edge or uh, rush players. And Wilsu's on the field for this play. Third down, three yards to go. Can we keep Allen in the pocket as they'll go option? And that is a stop by the defense. That was pretty well played. Jordan Brooks helped clean up that tackle. Nice little three and out forced by the defense. We'll start this drive with another two tight end set. As we'll stretch this one. Nice cut. And then a bit of an overcut as San Francisco is going to lose Greenlaw. Noah Fant in the slot as we go to Walker. And look at the speed. Kenneth Walker. Nice run. That's what I want to see more of. I made Walker the starting third down back and the starting power back, but not getting on the field as much as I would like. As we'll run again right into the San Francisco defense, and that's going to end the first. Not really making a lot of defenders miss in the open field, unfortunately. Third down, nine yards to go, which Drew Locke. Four-man rush by San Francisco. Will get there and wide open, but out of bounds is Lockett. How does that happen? We'll see if San Fran can do anything this drive or if they fizzle out again. Hand off here and some nice running space for them as well. Mitchell gets around seven. Lance on second down, throwing in. It's Kittle again. Thank you for making the tackle this time. No touchdown. Kittle's just a mismatch. Linebacker, safety, it doesn't matter. And we've got to deal with him a lot. Debo Samuel on the sweep. Gets them three yards. I love this playbook. I love the just personnel usage in Madden 23. 
And another run for Mitchell, not getting much. Third down, three yards to go. Samuel lined up top of the screen. Kittle slot to the right. And it's Trey Lance, quick throw in. That's hauled in. First down, Brandon Ayuk. Where is the pass rush? And why is Allen on? Oh my goodness, even Allen missed the read. Trey Lance, big run. That's now two option plays we haven't played very well. And I don't know what adjustments really make as they run and Brooks saved what might have been a first down run by Mitchell. I will say I haven't noticed much of Cody Barton as we go double A gap and they're gonna run the ball again and nice job up front. Oh my goodness, voice crack. Third and four, Lance underneath, Kittle again. That might be a first. And it is. Empty look for Lance. We're going to bring pressure. They're going to counter. And it's George Kill again. We're being a little too aggressive. Option again. This is Lance to the goal line. As he nearly scores. And now you got to watch out for Debo here. Third and goal. One yard out. And it goes to Debo. And we can't make the tackle. He makes the defender miss. Touchdown, 49ers. We had him. That was Taylor, number 52, who could not make the play. So close. So down by a touchdown. And we'll see what we do here with pretty much a two-minute drill. And now we're facing third and seven. And that's a nine-yard completion to Goodwin. Eight yards to Noah Fan. This drive going pretty well. Lockie gets 29. Nine for Goodwin again. Metcalf, no reception so far this game. 11 yards out from the end zone. 50 seconds left. Seven yards to Penny. And then Nick Bosa gets the sack. And we'll settle for a 28-yarder by Jason Myers. We'll sim a driver two here in the second half, down by four points. See what we can do on defense. As we start with an interception by Sidney Jones. And we're actually going to hop out and watch some of this. See what we can do. Nice job, defense. Defense gets a takeaway. Let's hope that we don't give the ball right back to the 49ers. Drew Locke back to the air. He'll throw to the end zone, and that's not even close. Locke now is 15 of 22. 150-ish yards, has a touchdown. Weekly goal is to get two passing scores this week. And obviously four scores. Oh, what a cut by Penny. They overran that. Come on, DK, make a play. Third down, four yards to go. It's Locke. Over the middle, ball caught, lock it, fumble, and 49ers football at the 20. And that fumble, I think, is going to stand. Who hit him? Was that Warner? Oh, my goodness. No, it wasn't Warner. I jinxed this. We gave the ball right back to him. This is just a really devastating play because this looked like it might have been six points. You know, it's Lockett with a block up the field by Noah Finn. Al Shire knocks the ball out from behind. Front Warner scoops it. Devastating. Really not what we want right there. San Francisco has full momentum. This is when things started getting really bad for us against the Broncos. As that ball is caught in the tight end somehow... Stayed in bounds and got the sideline. And I will say this. I, I just, I don't want Josh Allen in coverage. I don't. I really want to move us to a 4-3. Like, I know what people are going to say. Personnel is a 3-4. But our pass rusher should be at the quarterback every play. And they're going to run the ball again here. And nice job by Nwosu. I need to switch their assignment or their position on the depth chart because I don't know why Allen's lined up on this side. Well, that's a nice tackle. 
Brooks again. Look at how he reads that lane. That was perfect. Although Kittle didn't get the block. That might have freed him for a first. Somehow we're still in this game. Down by four. And Drew Locke trying to get his first win of the season. Nearly intercepted. But Tyler Lockett. Making all the plays right now. Metcalf in motion on second and 13. As he'll stop. And that is caught this time. Is that his first catch? Yeah, first catch, four yards. Hasn't been very effective today. And we'll see if we can find him on third and nine. We might need him. Four man rush. Here comes pressure. Lock. Can't hit Walker. As the pressure by Bosa forces the incompletion. This has been an interesting game. Option keeper in. This time we are ready for it. Nowhere to go for Trey Lance. Was hoping someone would knock the ball free there. Didn't happen. Second down. Lance throwing underneath. Allen in coverage again. At least he got a tackle to help the stats a little bit. But now he's at least lined up on the correct side of the offensive line as we'll bring pressure. Third down. Kittle again. You got to have two guys on him. And Brooks is not the one to be covering him one-on-one. -on -one. Brooks is going to have an incredible tackle volume at the end of this year as they run with Samuel. And guess who's there again? Brooks, Barton, Taylor, Third and nine for Lance. And underneath it's Samuel in trying to juke. And how did we let him fight for the first? There was three defenders there. This is still anyone's game. Oh my goodness, thanks. Someone made up. Who was that? Was that Allen? That was Amadi. Watch out for number 85, George Kittle. Lined up against Barton. And that's going to McLeod, and that's not going to be enough. They'll stall in midfield. It's Jordan Brooks again. Seven for 113 for Tyler Lockett today. What a start to the year for him. I wasn't expecting him to be our leading receiver, but it, it just might happen. DK Metcalf is not having the Richard Branch type production I thought we would have. If you watch the Eagles franchise, you know who Richard Branch is. What a throw. Goodwin also outperforming DK Metcalf as we get a big play to end the third quarter. Drew Locke. I don't know. Drew Locke might be the guy. I hate to say it. Like, Drew Locke's got that gunslinger mentality that I'm actually a really big fan of. And here's a nice run. Penny breaks a tackle and tries to spin out the safety. Good job by Noah Fant. But this average is still just not great. 2.8 yards a carry right now. That has to improve. Play action on first down. Drew Locke over Penny. Running again. Nice run. Penny fighting for yards. As he'll get nine. And in a short yarded situation like this, Kenneth Walker checks in. You would maybe want to see the ball go to Fant, who has not gotten the ball at all today. And that's a ball that is thrown away thanks to pressure by Bosa again. But the offense saves on the field. Fourth and one. Kenneth Walker is the back. We'll toss this one right side. Walker is not going to get a block. It's Warner making the play in the backfield. San Francisco gets another stop on defense. Great Lance from midfield. Almost got to him that time. And Mitchell's out of bounds with no yards gained. Pass rush. This is where I need you guys to start making plays. Josh Allen. Here we go. Some nice pass rush. He delivers a hit. And that is broken up. And if Jones had just gone for the interception off the tip, that would have been fantastic. 
Can Josh Allen do it again? He's dropping into coverage as we only rush three on third down. And we're still going to get to the QB. Puna Ford and Al Woods combine on the sack, and it's fourth down. This has to be the drive where we get points on offense. I didn't want to watch as much of this game as we are right now, but it's a close one, and I don't want Super Sim just ruining it for us as we go to Noah Fant, I believe, for the second time today. Gain of six yards. Yardage-wise, this game is close. Score-wise, this game is close. And it's Drew Locke on second down. Out to DK in the flat. Or not in the flat, towards the boundary. Another three tight end set. Tyler Locke at bottom of your screen. Drew Locke retreating in. Sacked, fumbled the football. San Francisco has it again. And Drew Locke makes the tackle on Eric Armstead. We just can't get out of our own way. We just cannot get out of our own way. This game has been close. But every time we have a chance to do something, we, we turn the ball over. This is painful to watch. San Francisco trying to add points here. We'll see if we can get a stop or at least keep them to a field goal. But it's not looking good. And I don't necessarily blame Drew Locke for all this. As they go option, we don't read it again. And Trey Lance, touchdown. They've run option at least five, six times today. I think we've only read it right once. And Allen didn't touch anybody there. Well, we're down by 11. And I just want to see if something can happen for us in Super Sim at this point. Metcalf gets 11. Penny gets 2. We're getting close to the end of this game. 17 more for Metcalf. And that's going to put us near the red zone. We'll hop out and watch a few more plays here. So we need 11 points in three minutes as we'll go screen. And the blocking. Not the best there. Two-yard gain. Just another example of us not being able to get out of our own way. Someone's got to make a play here. Underneath. Lock it again. Two-minute warning about the hit. Swing pass and another really nice tackle by this San Francisco defense. We have not made any one miss in the open field. And now we need a quick score. Just a jump ball to DK. They're not letting that happen. Lockett holds on at the one. Now first and goal, Drew Locke in zone. Walker holds on, touchdown. Got to go for two here. Make it a three-point game. Who does the ball go to? Drew Locke with time, retreating. Locke is not going to get rid of it. He's sacked again. I feel like he, can't, he had the slants. So we're not going to play the onside kick. We have three timeouts. If we can get a stop, especially with them now starting from the 25 with no time running off the clock, we've got a chance. But we are a minute 38 away from starting this season 0 for 2. We know they're going to run the football, or at least they should be, as they'll go to Mitchell, Jordan Brooks, as expected, is the guy to make the play. Timeout San Francisco, or uh, timeout Seattle. Running the ball again, and Mitchell. Oh, Cody Barton saved the, what might have been a first down. Mitchell had momentum. Barton came in, knocked him back, third and one. This is the ball game right here. If we don't get a stop, this game's over. Trey Lance under center, handoff, and we're not going to get it. Mitchell converts. Game over. And that is your ball game as we drop another one. And we started this year 0-2.
We just can't play a complete game. We just can't. Turnovers were killer this week. They were avoidable for sure. And they were definitely the difference between us winning and losing this game. It, it's that simple. This game was so winnable for us. Yardage-wise, we did our job. Third downs, we weren't great. Turnovers, obviously, those two really hurt us because they were during times of the game where we, we definitely had a chance to get a score and take the lead. It's another solid game out of Drew Locke. I mean, 294 yards, two touchdowns. Trey Lance had 182. Only had one touchdown through an interception. Had a slightly better yard per attempt, but a lot of that came on that big play by George Kittle. On the ground, it's just... It's hard to figure out what's going on. Penny, 15 carries, 50 yards. Had a few nice runs down the stretch. Kenneth Walker, 3 for 17. I would like for Walker to get more runs. But I don't want him to be the starter right now. But you would figure with him being the starting third down back and starting power back, he would get more chances. That just hasn't happened. Lock it at 137. Kittle, 106. Goodwin, 49. Metcalf, 43. Noah Fant, 43 as well. And like I said, Jordan Brooks is going to be busy. 14 tackles, 7 solo, 7 assisted, 2 tackles for loss this game. Neil had 7, and Wosu had 5, 2 for a loss. So he had a more productive game than Allen, who had 3 tackles, no sacks. And 2 of those were assisted. Tackles for loss as a whole. Wasn't a horrible game. Al Woods, productive. Puna Ford had 1 as well. But man, we could have used a lot more sacks. We love the interception by Sidney Jones. Would have loved to see another one. We had a chance for a few more. Obviously not the way I saw things going, but we'll roll with the punches. We'll see them again. And this game will be all the motivation we need to make sure it doesn't happen again. Oh my goodness. Why did I talk trash? Minus 15 morale? That's not good. Well, we've watched two games and we've lost two games. The rest of the games we'll watch this episode will be sim. We do have our first look at the mock draft and we also have our regional scouting focuses. We'll go through the mock draft really quickly just to see how things are as it looks like Emmett Cooper is now the number one projected player. Josh Simmons and James Mark have uh, slipped back a little bit. Where are we projected to pick first? It is at 10. And they have us taking Dwight Beckford, who is the top corner, one of the top corners this year. Beckford up to 35% now. We knew B-man coverage already. And we've now learned C play rec along with his B tackling. Cortez we've talked about. Zach Pryor projected to go 17th to Washington. And then we're projected to pick again at 22 with Rashard Taylor, who has unlocked C release. So 35%, we've got three of his four key ratings. That's not bad. Wrapping up the end of the first round, a few offensive linemen are running back to the Chargers. So the scouting focuses we'll have for this year is gonna be QB for the West, Central will be corner, Northeast at wide receiver, and Southeast, even though it's telling me not to, it's going to be offensive line. Defensive tackle is the other position expertise for Timmy Summers, who is a tier two scout. The only thing with this is, I, I think it's really easy to scout defensive tackles. I think this is a very easy group to scout. You know, once these guys get to 50%, we're gonna have a pretty good idea of where these guys are. Unfortunately, for the offensive line, primarily these right guards, Chris Brown, Chris Cole, Cliff Barton, um, these are a little more difficult to go over. There's also Sean Marks out of Auburn, who I think could have a little bit of upside. I don't think there was a left guard in this region. Yeah, it's just the one center, and there was a few right guards that I had interest in. We are near last in scoring. We are the worst rushing offense in the league, but our defense on paper isn't really that bad. So maybe this is a game that we can win. Rams off to a 2-0 start. We're 0-2. We got to get a win here against the Falcons. And kicking off upgrades, Drew Locke, this is a big one. Minus five morale, messing with all accuracies, awareness, throwing under pressure. Like, we've got to get a win. Because if you look at progression history, 
these losses aren't helping. That scenario isn't helping. So Drew Locke goes from a 66 overall to a 61. Definitely shows the wrong response for that scenario. We're gonna go Field General with this upgrade. Uh, so we'll get two boosts. That is awareness of three, medium accuracy of one. Plus three medium, one short, one deep, one release, one catch in traffic and awareness for Freddie Swain. That's an awesome upgrade. Helping him out a bit. I don't think he's seen the field at all. Probably won't for quite some time. Honestly, this season's a loss. We just lost to the Falcons 38 to nine. What is happening right now? We're 0-3 to start the year. I didn't think it was gonna be this bad. Marcus Mariota. 242, three touchdowns, Drew Locke only 150, his worst game of the year. 14 of 29 passing, he threw 48% rushing. Cordell Patterson puts up 63, Walker 38 yards. Rashad Penny, six for seven. I think Penny might have to sit. I think Walker's gonna be the starter from this point forward. 92 for London, 75 and a touchdown for Tate. Metcalf, 60. Pitts, 50. Lockett, 32. Noah Fant, 28. Goodwin, 24. Freddie Swain, 1 for 5. Cody Barton, pretty busy. 12 tackles. Josh Allen with a monster game. 10 and 2 for a loss. Nice to see that. Tackles for loss as a whole. Not a bad game. We had one sack this game. Split uh, between Shelby Harris and Quentin Jefferson. On the road once again, it's the 3-0 Lions this time, and we have a breakout scenario for a DB, and that is for Sidney Jones, who I I think is, is Jones star Dever normal. I can't remember. But hold the Lions to less than 200 yards passing, or Sidney Jones gets one interception, force fumble, tackle for loss, or sack. So this would move him to... Star Dev. Coach, your team has struggled out the gate so far, and when that happens, a lot of blame is usually placed on the quarterback who needs to step up. I am, I mean, outside this last game is not Drew Locke. It's, you know, week two was turnovers. I think week one was kind of just, you know, early season jitters, miscommunication, misexecution. I'm going to say the team. And this may not be the right thing to say because we're already dealing with minus 15 morale as a team. If we lose this game, we could be dealing with like minus 20 morale. We got to beat the Lions. We got to. We are 0-4 to start this season. And we did get two takeaways. Hopefully one of those was for Sidney Jones. I, I hope so. That will be the only positive thing coming out of this episode at this point. Drew Locke puts up 200 yards, two touchdowns, sacked three times. Jared Goff intercepted twice, one touchdown, sacked once, and Locke threw 57%. So those really nice percentage days he has when we were watching games aren't really following over into the games we're simming, which is kind of a problem. Kenneth Walker gets his first start, goes 19 for 72. Penny goes 11 for 49. So the run game wasn't horrible this week. Jackson 43, Cabinda puts up 30. And then receiving, Jamison Williams, the speedster, 99 yards and a score. Noah Fant, 98 and a score. Goodwin, 46. Metcalf puts up 44. And there's your interception for Sidney Jones. So he moves up in development, although he doesn't want to resign with us. So that's just going to make it even harder to get that done. He did lead us in tackles as well with 12. Coleman at 7. Wood, 7-2 seven and two for a loss. Amadi, or Amadi at 7. Cody Barton, 7. Tackles for loss this game. Al Woods, Harris, Sacks, 1 from Josh Allen. 6 tackles, 1 for a loss. Busy day for him. A lot more production when we're simming than when we're watching, apparently. Coach, I put in a lot of work this year and finally starting to see the results on the field. I appreciate you putting my talent to good use. Sidney Jones is now star development, which is nice. He also gets 20,000 experience. And I do just want to double check this again. Sidney Jones was one of those players, I think, that had very little to no interest in resigning. Yeah, it's pretty much a, a no. We might as well get this out the way too. Drew Locke, this might be the decline. No need to say anything about that game. It wasn't a win. 
I don't really feel like talking about it. On to the next one. Honestly, same. Be mad, be angry, be frustrated. Take it out on our next opponent. Let's get the next one. Taking on the Saints. Oh, never mind. So nothing happened for Julak. That's that's great. Cross probably won't get that Dev Train unlocked this game. He needs 73 snaps. Unless this game goes to overtime, I don't think the snap count will get that high. I do want to go with the uh, Scheme Fit here. Try to help out a little bit with this morale issue. He'll get finesse for pass and run block. And that'll bump him up to, well, actually, no, the pass block finesse is actually really good. It's an 88. That is fantastic. Speed Rusher upgrade for Nwosu gives him finesse, power, pursuit, zone coverage, and tackling and awareness. Plus three man coverage for Justin Coleman. Also has star dev, but that man coverage is now at 72. Still got to get this fixed. Kobe Bryant finally earns an upgrade, and he needs a big bump to his man coverage. That is the scheme fit. And five upgrades for Bryant. Press, man up one, zone up one, awareness up two, tackling up one as well. And Sidney Jones has two upgrades. We'll use the first one on man coverage. Might actually use both on man. Press goes up one. Yeah, we'll definitely use the second one on man coverage. I was looking for a little bit more of a bump there. And only plus one. It's not horrible. I hate to say it, but looking at this matchup, it also doesn't look like this game's going to go well for us. So if the story is we're starting this year 0-5, what are the potential roster moves that we want to make? Because right now, I mean, yeah, we have two first round picks. We have two, actually three seconds. We have a third. And then two fours, a five, and a six. We have no seventh round pick this year. And if we wanted to, we could potentially talk about, you know, if we really needed to, we could trade next year's second or next year's first to try to move up and get a player. But if there's players right now that can be moved ahead of the deadline, which isn't for a few weeks, you know, who are those players? I think if we're making a trade, it's in our secondary again. And it's Sidney Jones, who just got the boost to start dev. I do want to check the trade block or add him to the trade block. And I also want to see what the actual market for him is. Similar to Josh or Jamal Adams. We're not making this trade right now, but if I wanted to look at offers, who wants a, a new corner? Well, this isn't very interesting. These offers aren't nearly anywhere as interesting as the ones that we got for Jamal Adams. Kawan Williams. Isaiah Simmons in a four next year. This could keep us from having to address linebacker. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but we would definitely be moving to a 4-3 if I had Simmons and Jordan Brooks. Drew Tranquil, uh, the Chargers, Hardman, Rogers, Logan Thomas. Yeah, these offers aren't that great. We'll probably look at this again closer to the trade deadline or see what offers are on the board next week. Because I think that these offers are a little weirder than the other ones we get. We lost again. We're 0 5. And I I don't know what to do. We watched two games. We've simmed three. This one, three point loss. It was close, but a loss is still a loss. And Jameis Winston puts up 291. Drew Locke, 253. I don't think a change at quarterback is needed, although these, yeah, this this is bad. 47%, you're not gonna win games though, 47%. But then again, it's the morale. It's not really Drew Locke's fault. Kenneth Walker leads all rushers with 60 yards, so the change making him the starter was actually really beneficial. Kamara only 45, Edmonds 41, Penny 36, he did score. Metcalf one for seven. We gave up almost 100 yards in a touchdown to Taysom Hill. Fire my defensive coordinator. Do it right now. Metcalf, 88 yards and a touchdown. One of his better games this year. Marquise Goodwin, 85 in a score. Michael Thomas, 72. Noah Fant, 43. Lockett, 37. So the two games we watched, Lockett was very productive, but 
the past three games, he really hasn't done much. Dustin Coleman, eight tackles. Sidney Jones with seven. And we'll see seven and one for a loss, plus half a sack this week. Blair with seven. Pretty happy with the run defense, I guess. Josh Allen, another sack, five tackles. And that sack between Iwosu and Coleman gets us the two in the game. Week one, we lose 38-22. Week two, we lose 21-16. Week three, we lose 38-9. And then these past two games have been one-score losses. So three of our five games have come down to one-score differences. We have three games remaining until the deadline. We have a few weeks left until our bye. I don't know how to get out of this hole we're in right now. It's partially morale. It's partially some other stuff. It, it's just, it, it's tough. We have a receiver that wants to talk about his lack of production. We do not surprisingly have a rivalry scenario for this week. But we do have a trade offer for Sidney Jones, or trade offers for the 26-year-old corner. And these look about the same. Jabril Peppers. So five weeks into the year, the Bengals are the only undefeated team remaining. The Lions just lost their first, and so did the Rams. Chicago's won three straight games. Browns are four and one. A lot of teams in the middle of the pack at three and two and two and three. As we get towards the bottom, the Broncos have lost four straight. They're one and four, and currently the Jets and Seahawks are your only teams without wins. I promise you, I'm not tanking. I'm not forcing losses. I'm not making the Broncos lose as well. I know that's probably going to come up in the comments. Like, I'm not forcing losses for earlier draft picks. I'm simulating games. This is just how things have gone for us this year. Also, take a look at Denver. No one's forcing wins or losses for them. They just had some actually really close games. 34, 35, 31, 34. 30. Yeah, this, this is tough for them as well. So we're off to an 0 and 5 start. We'll probably only have two more games that we'll watch out of this season if we keep losing. We've got Arizona potentially twice next episode or more than likely twice next episode as they're three and two. Chargers, Giants in the middle of those two games. Not really sure which game I want to watch next episode, but thank you guys for watching and hopefully enjoying the episode. I know this is uneventful. Like, we're, we're there's a lot of things to fix. This is why Seattle was my team this year. Quarterback play was obviously going to be an issue. We knew that there were going to be some other problems with this group. We're definitely making a few trades next episode. Sidney Jones likely won't be here. I don't know who else is being dealt. I almost want to trade Josh Allen at this point because it's just like we, we might as well get rid of him too. But uh, that's not going to happen. Thank you guys for tuning in though. Hope you enjoyed. See you later.